Sorry, I have a cold. You're probably going to hear a wheeze every once in a while. I need to talk about Casper the Friendly Ghost for a minute because he is probably the best character ever thought up and should be way more appreciated. Okay, so basically most of Casper's interactions play out in a very similar way. Casper's just living his best forever little boy afterlife, and he is just so unbelievably friendly. Did you please rub your lucky foot on my friend? Like, you could spit in this dude's face and he'd just be like, Oh, jeez, fella, why'd you have to go and do something like that? So he'll run into some people and he'll be all social and outgoing. And then these people will recognize that Casper is, in fact, a ghost. And will consistently freak out more than anyone in the world ever has. A ghost! This man ducks so hard that he shatters all his bones and makes himself six inches tall, and then when he is this disgusting full-grown man compressed down to 8% of his original volume, he jumps 20 feet into the air. Now, you may be saying, Tom, of course, it's a cartoon. Reactions are obviously going to be a little bit extra dramatic. But no, the show is actually being realistic, because Casper does not take place in our world. These reactions are perfectly justified, because to the people who live in the Casper universe, ghosts are a real threat, and they are absolutely terrifying. <laughs> hey fellas, there's good booze today. It's Friday the 13th. <laughs> it's not called Casper the Friendly Ghost just because he's a friendly ghost. No, he is the friendly ghost. Casper is that one German soldier who realized that murdering innocents is actually kind of lame. So, after Casper causes people to go absolutely puffs for Coco Cuckoo, he usually says something to the effect of, Damn bro, it really sucks that every time I try to interact with somebody, they hate me because of something I can't control. I sure wish making friends wasn't so difficult for me. He then always keeps a positive attitude and keeps trying. There is no possibility to dislike this character. He literally tries to do everything right and be nice to everyone, despite him being trapped in a world where everyone hates him. Casper might actually be a little bit too friendly. At one point, he invited a literal giant to live with his friends because the giant was lonely. I'm Casper, the friendly ghost. My name's Hugo. I, I was sighing because I'm, I'm lonesome. I've got some wonderful animal friends who can cure your loneliness. I've got a surprise for you. We're going to have a guest. A giant? But he's very friendly. Couldn't he stay here for a while? Well, yes, uh, why not? This is insane, Casper. I get that you want to be nice, but you can't just volunteer someone else's house like it's a place to stay. And this poor bear, I'm sure that he really trusts Casper and wants to do the right thing, but for God's sake, say no. Logistically, how could you possibly live with a cartoon giant? He's at least 40 feet tall. Do you think this idiot you're physically incapable of kicking out is going to pay rent? Of course not. And you haven't even met him. All you know about him is that when he walks within a mile radius, he makes a loud thud and shakes the ground which I personally see as a negative quality in a roommate. Aside from this blunder though, I think Casper's friendliness is kinda sick. Let's take a look at the episode Boo Moon, which is a terrible title, but the episode opens with a normal night on the town for Casper. He is trying to use public transit like everyone else, but unfortunately these seven sets of ghost phobe triplets do not find his existence acceptable. He then notices this street bro renting out his telescope, of course, this man is not having any of it because Casper is, the least threatening thing imaginable, a two-foot-tall dead child. Luckily, the man leaves his telescope accessible so Casper can still use it. Now, for you single people seeking males out there, a lot of you want somebody spontaneous. The kind of guy who has fun ideas and then does them. If that sounds appealing to you, then Casper is the perfect suitor. Without a second thought, he decides that his evening plans are cancelled. He is going to the moon. For no other reason than that the man in the moon looks friendly. So, after traveling to the moon in 40 seconds, he realizes there is no man in the moon, and because he just went about 35 billion miles per hour, he takes a power nap. As we all know, but unfortunately Casper does not, you can't nap on the moon on account of the tiny moon people that will kidnap you. Since he is such a brave hot chad, Casper is immediately down for whatever the moon people have planned. He falls asleep, alone in space, wakes up in a cage built by aliens who are in the process of kidnapping him, and his reaction is... Golly! Moon people! <laughs> They're real cute! So obviously, the moon people bring Casper to the Moon King, and even though it seems as though ghosts are not a known problem on the moon, they are still terrified of him because he is a giant monster. 
The Moon People and Casper do both speak English, so Casper calmly explains to them that he's just a chill homie. But still, the king orders... Guards! Guards! Put the monster in the royal dungeon! At this point, Casper's pretty disappointed since he failed to make friends. But you are not about to catch this man resisting arrest, despite him not even being accused of a crime. Even though he can phase through objects, Casper is just going to let himself be imprisoned for the rest of his eternal life, because the Moon government says so. However, he is not imprisoned because... The tree men are attacking! The tree men are attacking! That's right, even Hajime Izuma himself has admitted that the idea of Attack on Titan came from this 1954 episode of Casper, which is why all the proceeds from Attack on Titan have gone towards cutting-edge ghost research in hopes that one day dead children will be able to live among us. Do not leave a comment about the fact that I just said among us. So, upon seeing the Titans approaching, Casper immediately starts cheering on his captors, who plan to take away all his freedoms because he's just that much of a cool dude. And it is pretty easy to root for the Moon Team, since at first they are doing a great job of burning the ops to death but the tree men use one of the abundant moon puddles to steamroll the defense. At this point, Casper, the intellectual powerhouse, realizes Gosh, they need help! So he turns on god mode and pulls all of the tree men into the ground so they can be publicly executed when it's most convenient for the moon people, which the moon people obviously think is pretty sweet, so they knight Casper. It also helps that at this point they realize he could easily kill any of them, as he could just about anyone because Casper is a strong, friendly, independent ghost boy who we should all look up to for his incredible restraint. Please share, subscribe, and leave a negative comment down below. I'm going to be trying to upload something about once a week from now on.